week after the Mangum to Matthews, Nebraska miracle in 2015, the Cougars hosted 20th ranked Boise State on a 71 degree clear night that resulted in our next guest's greatest moment at BYU. Pressure from behind. Mangum flips it into the end zone. We've seen this before. Touchdown, BYU! Mitchell Jurgens climbs the ladder, plucks it out of the air, and, and nothing less than a prayer from Tanner Magnum. Well, uh, Tanner Magnum, but Tanger? yes. Tanker? Uh, Tyler Magnum was also a great quarterback. Why show that clip? Why not show that clip as we welcome in BYU radio sideline reporter for Cougar football, Mitchell Jurgens, to the program. Mitch, does that get old watching that? No, no. That's, uh, yeah, the, the amount of times I've seen it, um, you'd, you'd think it would, but I, I love it. It's uh, living in the glory days. Okay, so, so Jerem said that it's the greatest moment like for I'm assuming a lot of people would say that do you is that your greatest moment to you personally I mean on the football field it has to be this is um, to to be in that position to make that catch I mean first off it shouldn't have been me it should have been um, there we had a number of of taller targets on a, on a deep hill Mary that maybe would have been um, the better option. So for me, it was, I, I mean, absolutely. It goes down in, in uh, greatest moments for me on the football field to do it at Lavelle after the Nebraska game. Um, yeah. It is n nothing short of amazing. I was fortunate to be in the right spot at the right time. So. Yeah, that was amazing. And Starman, it's like one of the greatest celebrations in BYU history. It's like up there with Steve Young, uh, her, you know, high knees uh, in 83 against Missouri. It was great. Okay. Our question of the day is this. Mitch, will this season teach us – what will this season teach us about BYU's readiness to compete in the Big 12? What do you think? Yeah, I, I think it can teach a lot. Um, as we look at this season, I mean, you look at the schedule, and this schedule that we have is, is – yeah, we have less P5s on the calendar. I think it was than last season. We've got five this season. We had seven last season. Um, but arguably more challenging uh, for this BYU team. And – and so I think as we look at the um, just the ability for them to compete week after week, this is what the Big 12 is going to be about, right? Um, the you know you don't you don't get many breaks in the schedule. There's a lot of competitive teams that are win that have winning traditions. And so to to prove that hey BYU is ready to make that, that leap, um, they're going to have to to put together a pretty good season and and just get used to the fact that we get week you're playing competitive football teams that know how to win um and and with that said too i think it's going to be a test of our depth um we saw it last season as as we started to lose a couple of key players and and maybe the the quality of our performance declined a bit and so i think this gives a huge opportunity for these um you know Um, you know, top-notch players to come in and do a fabulous job uh, for BYU if starters go down. Because a season, you know, in the Big 12 and even this season this year, you're going to need talent, you're going to need depth um, throughout the entire season. You know, Mitch, you, you touched on the schedule and obviously just some unbelievable matchups this year. And maybe the answer to these questions is the same but what's the game that you're most looking forward to? And then as the sideline reporter, obviously you're, you get to go to all these different venues. What's the trip you're most excited for? Yeah, so the game I'm most excited for is, is for sure the first home game against Baylor. Um, if, if things go as planned and as it should, these are going to be two ranked teams in Provo at Lavelle Edwards Stadium um, under the lights. Um, you know, it's, it's a late kick. Um, I'm a huge fan of of the late kicks at at Lavelle. I think there's a special energy that's brought under the lights. Um, and so two, you know, should be one and0 teams ranked uh, in the top twenty five. and And so I think that game, it's also going to be a revenge game for BYU. So coming in, um, they know how physical Baylor was the last time they played them. I think they're going to be ready for it. and And so that game, I, I think I'm most excited for. Um, as far as the the trip, um, I think I'd have to say that the Notre Dame game in Vegas, uh, selfishly, I wish we were playing Notre Dame at Notre Dame. Um, I, I wasn't fortunate enough to be 
um, traveling at the time when BYU went to Notre Dame and played them in their stadium. I think that could have been maybe a little bit more iconic for me, but um, you, you can't go wrong at the Legion Stadium. Um, it's going to be a fun game, a, a huge, uh, you know, an amazing atmosphere. And uh, hopefully at that time, too, we've got two pretty high ranked teams and, and a good battle at, uh, in Vegas. We're talking to Mitchell Jurgens on BYU Sports Nation, BYU Football Sideline Reporter. BYU fans were hoping that Notre Dame game was in Provo. You wanted it at Notre Dame I'm I, for those reasons, yes. Those games would yeah. have been epic, right? And BYU certainly had uh, opportunities to win there uh, in 20, 2012 and 13. Okay, let's talk about um, the series that BYU's going to end for a little while. We don't know uh, when BYU's going to play Utah State again. It sounds like they will. Boise State, they may not meet up for a long time, if ever again. Who knows? Um, which of those two series will you miss the most? Um, Boise State. Uh, I think the uh, the ongoing rivalry that we've had with Boise State has been pretty remarkable. I mean, I, I have a, a brief, you know, a little bit of a personal connection with with that rivalry, but um, it's it's always been competitive. Um, these these are teams that no matter where they sit in the rankings, ranked not ranked, this is a uh, you know whether we're playing on the blue turf or, or a Lavelle Edwards Stadium. It's always a battle. I mean, these are two very competitive teams, and it almost feels like when the teams, when the two teams get together on the field, um, I mean, you, you never know what you're going to expect, right? Um, Boise pulls out their bag of tricks. I feel like in the past, BYU's even brought the bag of tricks against Boise um, to beat them where where they've beat a lot of others, and and so that's a that's definitely a series that um, I hope we can continue. Um, I, I don't know what that's going to look like, but. Uh, Definitely gonna gonna miss seeing the the Cougars play the Broncos year after year. We have talked so much about this offense and the potential of it as a whole, but when you look at the individual players, Mitch, it, right at the top of that list has got to be Puka Gunner. What are your expectations for Nakua and Romney in this offense this season? Yeah, I think they're gonna have a huge season. Um, I'm a big believer that confidence is so key um, on the football field, right? And these are two players that are established veterans on the BYU roster, especially within the receiving core. They have the connection with Jaron Hall. And so honestly, I think the sky's the limit for both of them. Um, we talk about, and I've you know, seen reports in camp. I mean, the, the wide receiver depth right now is top notch. Uh, with those two guys at the helm, um, you've got you know Chase Roberts, Cody Epps, um, Keanu Hill, even, um, you know, hearing a lot of good things about Braden Cosper um, and his just ability to make plays, um, very reliable, consistent receiver. And, and so I think that, you know, for this entire group, um, there's, there's so much at stake that, that gets BYU fans excited for as a former receiver, um, very excited for the, the potential that this group brings this year. And I mean, it's led by two guys, Puka and Gunner, who have done it before. They've been there, they've done that. And uh, I think confidence is going to be at an all time high for both of them, which is going to reflect in, in their performance. All right, Mitch, you talked about Puka and Gunner. Who's a guy that isn't one of those two who you think will be a major factor this year among the receivers? Um, it, it's. It's hard not to say Keanu Hill, uh, the way that he finished last year was, was pretty remarkable. Um, you know, he was given opportunities to step up and make plays and, and he did that. So I, I'm super excited to see what he can do uh, for the Cougs this season. Um, I, I also, I, I want to see Chase Roberts on the field. Um, I don't know if this comes as, as my new hometown. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an American Fort guy now. Um, never thought I'd say that, but uh, that's, that's where I live. <laughs> yeah. And, and with Chase Roberts, just what he did at American Fork his senior year, I think he just absolutely dominated, um, you know, almost 100 catches, close to 1,800 yards, 18 touchdowns. Those are That's a ridiculous stat line. I, I'd love to see that guy get loose and get opportunities. Um, I, I think he's got the potential to, to truly take over an offense. Um, but, but obviously, he's, he's learning from the greats with Puka and Gunner, but uh, he's definitely someone I'm high on and excited to, to watch play for the Cougs this season. Mitchell, how likely do you think it is that BYU has at least one 1,000-yard receiver this year? You know, to be honest, I don't think it's likely. Um, and the reason for that is how much depth there is at the at the receiver position. Um, you know, as we look at it, even when I played, I mean, I don't think I was part of 
uh, a team where we had a thousand yard receiver. And I think it was just collectively, we had a ton of talent, um, a, a ton of um, great playmakers on the offensive side that demanded attention. And so with, yes, I, I mean, I think Puka and Gunner both can be 1000 yard receivers. Uh, but as far as it actually happening, I think there's just too many targets to go around because uh, we're not even taking into consideration the the tight ends. We haven't talked about them yet, uh, but there's a lot of talent at that position who's, who's going to demand some attention from Jaron. So um, I, I don't think we'll see a thousand yard receiver. I'd love to see Puka and Gunner get as close to that as possible. Uh, but that, if they don't get there, that absolutely doesn't mean that they were impactful this season um, and that Jaron had you know a great connection with both of them. Let's talk about those tight ends. Isaac Rex coming off of a, a broken foot against USC, but he said he's uh, on a pitch count until game one, and hopefully if we'll go at that point. Dallin Holker has been a guy that we've been excited about in 2018 before his mission last year. Uh, you know, 200 yards, 235 yards. What kind of expectations do you have for those two? Yeah, those two specifically, I'm, I'm high on their ability to contribute. I think Dallin Holker specifically, he's – He's got to be one of the most athletic tight ends I've seen. Um, just his ability to move and catch. I mean, he, he catches the ball like a receiver. Um, and, and so I love watching him play. As, as long as he can stay healthy, I think he can have a big year. Um, and then Isaac Rex, I mean, that's just a big target that is incredible in the red zone, as we've seen here at BYU. Um, and again, I think he's he's a, a veteran player that's been there. He's done that. He has experience on the field, and, and that confidence is going to show as he steps in. And so those are two tight ends that um, I think we've got um, a lot of confidence in, in both of them, and, and they can prove this season that they're just as, um, just as able to make the big plays as, as the receiver group can. Well, it's going to be a great season. We're excited about it. Thanks for joining the program, and uh, we're going to hear from you a bunch this year on BYU Radio on the sidelines, Mitchell. Hey, thanks, guys. Pleasure. Thanks, Mitchell.